Welcome to the Yeshiva Shalmarla. This is David Lichtenstein. And this week we're going to be speaking about technology and halacha and hashkafa. You know, schools have been closed now for a few months, till the end of the school season, possibly till the end of the year, possibly till they have a vaccine. It could be 12 months. So using Zoom to educate our children, is it technology to the rescue? Here's the debate, or fakert, we're bringing the pestilence of the internet, the scourge. You know, the internet, 30% of all use is pornography. It's a fact, if you Google internet use. Forgetting about kfira, internet addiction, games. So your kids are on the phone, they're listening, it's horrible. How can you listen to a Rebbe as it is in class? I used to fall asleep. Imagine on the phone, not with other friends there. So is it, is it, a savior, or is the cure greater than the disease? So now they have Zoom tablets that they're selling for 125 by technology organizations, for school, for kids. Only Zoom, it uses nothing else. Is it a Yeshua or not? So who are we going to have on this? Rabbi Nehemiah Gottlieb, who was tasked by Rabbi Matisio Solomon for coming up with a chinuch solution for our generation, the danger of the internet. How do we keep our families in a migdash ma'at? How is our home a mishkan, not invaded by this new plague called internet? He's also the founder of TAG. He has over 400 volunteers. He was the behind the city field, Internet Asifa. He's the superstar of keeping your house clean, Rabbi Nechem Gottlieb. He will explain the Rosh Hashivas of Lakewood who said, no Zoom for children in Meistus. We will have from Chabad, the, the Mashpia, the most watched rabbi on YouTube, quite a title, Ramanus Friedman, and he'll be speaking about using technology for education and why not use, you know, if we, ha- if we have, we deal with the dangers of the internet on a day-to-day basis, it's unavoidable. Well, why not get some benefit from it? And one of the things, and Chabad does this very successfully, and one of the questions that we're going to discuss with him, the Alter Rebbe, that was so famously against, you know, tech. he believes, keep the Jews in their ghetto. When Napoleon was going to invade Russia, he said, in Napoleon will bring wealth, emancipation, enlightenment to the Jewish people. You think that's good? He said, no, I prefer Yerush and poverty and ghettos than emancipation, wealth, and kfira. Well, if that was the opinion of the Balatanya, what has changed? And then we're going to have on the second part of our program, Dr. Eli Shapiro and Dr. Mayer Zwicker, and they're going to be discussing the mental health issues that are going on now. People locked up in, you know, social distancing, quarantine with their families. It's been two months. It's going to be months more, right? And how do we, what do we do about the angst, panic, shalom bias issues, harmony Right, dealing with the children. Interestingly, by the way, my feeling about this is, and I think maybe I'm a yachet here because maybe I'm maybe a little bit older, but I remember once hearing a song, The Cat in the Cradle. And it's basically the gist of the song is it's a musashmus. How you know that child who's cricking on your nervin? Well, guess what? Before you could blink, he's going to be in school. Then he's going to be in Eretz Yisrael. Then he's going to be gone, married, living in a different country maybe. And you're going to try to get him on the phone for 10 minutes. You're going to feel lucky. It's like when my grandchildren come over to the house, so, you know, some people, they say, oh, they make noise. I said, you know, when you're, when you're in a supermarket, if you own a supermarket and you're sitting by the register and you hear ka-ching, that doesn't make the owner nervous. It makes him, oh, ka-ching, it's good. I said, what's more beautiful than hearing these sounds? So I personally don't find it stressful, but many people do feel fine it's stressful. So we're going to have these two mechanchem, psychologists, discuss that. What's the silver lining, how to deal with it, etc. Okay, so I want to say like a, a, a Torah thought. For two months already, the sh- doors of our shoals are closed. And we're not, we don't go once a week, l'havdo ben achayim, ben achayim, ben amesim, once a week on Sunday to church, right? By us, Erev Avaykir Vitzarayim, three times a day. No minyanim now, no chavrusis, no tzibur. 
This connection is like Eicha Yashva Badad Haisa Kalmana. I mean, we are Knesses Yisrael, Klal Yisrael. Everybody heard the, the Kitty Genevieve, 79 people passed by a young woman years ago. It was written up in the Times. Kitty Genevieve, she was killed, and everybody, all the bystanders walked past. The homeless people, people walk past them. They don't even go out a second by Klal Yisrael. Imagine you were in Geula as a Yid lying there. Everybody would stop. By Samay Dal Damariecha is is goes to the core of who we are. Baroivam Hadras Mela. Call Yisrael Aravim Zelaza. We're responsible. We get punished for another one's hate. And we even if we Makaimits, we could do it again just to be mighty somebody. We're a team. Call Yisrael is a team. How do we go sixty days without saying Shalom Aleichem? Tanachayid. You know the Haidli Rebbe Amelech once said, Kol Yisrael Aravim. This is only a holy chassid can say this. Aravim Eloshin, he says, Vaharivna, sweet. He says, All Jews are sweet one to the other. We love when we see each other, well, you know, it reminds me of a story. My sister was a single, she was a young girl, seminary age, she was in Italy. They made up to meet a friend, Benazmanim, two kids, they're gonna tour Rome and then fly. And she's in the airport. This is there's no cell phones. And it's uh, this is years ago, right? This is before uh, you know palms and 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 uh, and iPhones and Blackberries. And her friend isn't there. There's a mix-up, and she's frantic. So she sees a plane from Israel is had disembarked, and there was a Hamishid going rushing to his plane. So she goes over to me. She says, "Excuse me, could you help me?" She says, "Yeah." She says, "I know you're going to catch a plane. My friend didn't show up. I don't. I don't know where to." He said, well, tell me the story. He said, they went to a payphone. He called the girl's mother in America. Should he couldn't get through the father's office. Fi- she says, you know, you're going to miss your plane. He says, Ich Yiddish kin ain't I should let a Jewish, you know, but he's called Yisrael Aravim. At the end, he, he, he connected them and then he rushed off. So as he was rushing off, she said, what's your name? He said, I'm Miller from Muncie. So, she thought, she tried to find out who it was. She came back to America. Miller from Muncie, you could realize it's not. She couldn't find the person, Miller from Muncie. She thought she saw Leo Anavi. 15 years later, he said, she's by a chasana in LA. And a guy gets up a batchen in the middle. He says, so I'm Miller from Muncie. So she, she didn't recognize him. He had turned, I guess, gray. And she went over to him a little. She said, Miller from Muncie, were you ever in Italy? He said, no. She said, did you ever change planes in Italy? He looks at her, he says, Du bist the Yiddish kind? So I guess she was happy she was able to thank him, and she was like a little bit sad. She guess she didn't have Gilelio. <laughs> but call Yisrael Aravim, and we're hoping Adam Lechavere is Gechepit during this time, which goes to the essence of who we are. And what about our relationship with Kaviachal? Erev Avaykiv Yitzra, Anis Filasi Lecha Hashem Eisratz in the Gemara says in Brachis, B'Navches, B'Shosh HaTzibur Mispalin, it's Eisratz in the Rambam in Elchus Tfila, HaTzibur Nish, Tfila Sibur Nish Mas Tamid, G'dayla Tfilasin Shal Rabbam Lofnei Amakayim, you know, the Balatanya the, says that in his Igeris HaKadish writes, Shamati Mirabaisa, you heard Ishmi Piyish from the Magid and from the Baal Shem, that when there's a Chabura of Asara, and there's a Malach HaMekatrig, he's terrified to open his mouth. His aim of a fachad, they fell us all of, the Russian Ram of the Balatanya. Right? So when we, now in these eight weeks, our Bein Adam L'Chaveri is Gechepet, and our Bein Adam L'Makam, our connection with the Rabbein Shalalam is, is just changed. It's, it's, it's like a marriage in a marriage. Your, your spouse says, I'm going to, six months I'm going someplace, or two months. It's, what does that mean? We have a relationship. It reminds me, Nora Futten said, Similar time, but between Bayis Rishon and Bayis Shadi, it says Mordechai came out. Vayitzak tzaka gedola umara. Mordechai screamed at tzaka gedola umara. So he said, "What type of tefillah is tzaka gedola umara? You don't have that in tefillah, even though it's one of the Asar l'shainus for tefillah tzaka." So he said, "Rav Hutton said something beautiful. He said this was a time where the world was shaken. Why the Neviim and Bayis." We're masakin hakel agad lagiber vanayra. The matbeira we have came the gullus. Kal Yisrael said, "Ayeg vuraisa." We can't say hakel hagadel. He's not gadol today. He's not giber today. He's not noyra today. 
until the Anshe Shesha by Yishaini came, and they said, no, Hain Hain Gvuraisa, Klal Yisrael's ability to survive in such a hostile situation, that's when your metal was really tested, that's when we see the godless of the Rabbi But for that 70 years, there was a void, there was no tefillah. So he said, so Mordechai said, davening kenichnisht, in this time of no tefillah. Something really sublime. It's beautiful. But Lamaisa, we're in a time, I can't go to show. I can't say, Amen Yehesh Rabba. What do we say? God what, what am I supposed to do? What are all of us supposed to be doing? We can't say Baruch So I had a, something, a thought I want to share with you. Now the Gemara you learned probably in Daf Yemi and Bracha says, there's a machleikish, Rabbi Yeshua Chanin says, who was Mesakin Shmanesrei, the Tfilos, the Gimel Tfilos, Erev Avaykev Yitzarayim? Rabbi Yeshua says, the obvious one Mesakin then, Avram, Shachris, Yitzhak Mincha, Yaakov Meirev. And the other man, the Yama says, no, Keneged the Karbanais Tzibor. And it's Kam of a Kam and Afkeminus Lalacha, Teresameach brings, etc. But um, I want to say I have a thought. You know, the tefillahs that we say in Shman Esrei, right, that they were Masak and Lan Sheikh Nesak they're all Lush and Rabbim, every single one, right? Uh, you know, uh, what do you say? Slach Lanu, Hashivenu, Rabbanyenu, Rafaenu, right? And many of them are just very remote, high things. Taka Bishayf Agadul Lacherusenu, Hashiva Shayftenu, like bring back the Shayftim and the Lamashin. Klal Yisrael, like the Semlech Ata Hashem Levadecha, Tfilas on the big world picture. The Tfilas of the Avis were, were very different in two ways, right? And and if we're davening Negedet, it seems that there's a, another Mahalach Tfila, right? Let's start with Yaakov is the easiest one. Yaakov now here's a question. Yaakov just came from Yeshiva Shem Vever. Why wasn't he Masak in Bitsibur in the Yeshiva? Right? Tfilas Mayrev. And what was his Tfila? It wasn't Hashiva Shefteinu or Malshinim, which he could have done. He had plenty of Malshinim, Esav, and, and, and which call it, and uh, Yishmael. It's very personal Tfila. What did he dive in? Rabbi Nisham, he was all alone. He said, Rabbi, Madi. Ushmarani baderach hazeh, be with me, Lord. Shelter me, baderach hazeh, on this lonely path that I'm going. And you know what? Give me lechem lechel, ubeke. Just give me something to eat, clothing. My parnasa is in date. The shafti b'shalem el beisavi. I want to come back. I want to return alive to beisavi. Very personal tefillah, but but not but sibur barabim. And what about the tefillah of yemincha? Lasuach basada. He didn't go to a shul. And by the way, you're laughing at me. Well, the, what does the Gemara say in in uh, in Yuma, right? All the avos were Yoshev be yeshiva. Avram was Yoshev. The Gemara and Daf in 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 Yuma. Yitzchak was Yoshev be yeshiva. Yaakov was yeshiva. Shem veever. The Rambam famously in Ochsav Vayda says Vayda Zara Parak Aleph says where was this yeshiva? He's Avram Avinu, as I am a halech, the kaira, umakabets am, me ear le ear, me eretz le eretz, mamlocha la mamacha, thousands of adshin escap to alpayim the river vice, tens of thousands, them anche base Avram, and them the shasal believe on the iker agodal. So why does it say vayashkim Avram ba biker by himself to be masak in shachras? What happened to Tfil Libet Sibur? And Lasuach Basada, it says he was mispal for a shidduch. What happened to Lamal Shinim, to, to all these grandiose, as Tzemach David, to Kab Shaifar? What happened to all that? So it seems there's, there's the Mahalach of Tzibur, the Mahalach of Tzibur of Tzibur. And what is that? You know, societal, call Yisrael, Knesset Yisrael. But there's another Tzibur, the personal cries of Biyachid. And they weren't in the yeshivas, and they weren't in where they built their mizbechays, where they in their in their you know they built these edifices, places of where was it? It was a place that was meaningful to them. Vayifka b'makayim, l'makayim masha amayit sham, where he davened with Hashem once before, right? The Avis did have mizbechays. It says in but the sheva mizbechays arachti. It says by Bilam kineged Avrams mizbechays abam bid four years. They didn't daven there. 
So you know what I did? I had this machshava, and I went out to daven in the garden. I went and, and, and I davened my own tefillah. There's a different mahalach of tefillah. And you know, by the way, halachically, this way, the Mishnah the mission says in, in, in Brachas, you probably learned it, that Rebbe Leza holds, you're not mispal musaf, only when there's a tzibur being davening. And the, so Zakta Miri, why musaf? He says, because the other three tefillahs were negative the Aves, and, mis- and Rabbi Yoyin says that they were, they were established for the Yachid to cry to God. So even by Yachid you could do that. The Musaf was only negative. The Aves were in Mespal Musaf. was only negative the Musafim of the Beis HaMikdash. So there it has to be only B'Tzibur. And there's other Nafkim in Islam, the Halacha and Machshava. But I'm saying, is it now possibly a time where we could reconnect one-on-one with the Rabbi Nishalaylam in our own language, in a place that's precious to us, that's meaningful to you? Is it time for once, you know, you go to Shul, I dive in a minion, and depending which minion, they say, okay, if it's for seeking, it's for sure, you have to, okay, but even if it's the seven o'clock, seven twenty is Baruch and the guy next to you is in a race to get there. You know, when you're with a group, there's no spontaneity. Any the teams have to work together. Imagine, you know, one guy's running in one direction, yeah, that's not a teamwork. Right? Everybody here for once. No, it's spontaneous. Yourself. The way it's meaningful to you. Your own path to the Rabbi Nishol. And it's very fitting that it's during the Sphira. Because, you know, it says, So Taisa says, Lachem, why is it different than Yoival, that Bezdin, Shemitah? Bezdin does the counting. So Taisa Sfira Lakal Echad Vechad. Sfira means everybody. So even though Harsinai was Kiish Echad Belevechad, again, this Tsibur, this dominating Tsibur, but the path to God is Sfira Lakal Echad Vechad. So much so that the Mishnabura Paskins famously, not like other Paiskim, uh, the Sharatsi, and he brings from, I forgot the name, it eludes me for a second, that there's no Shemea Ka'ina. By Sphira Saimer. Right? From that good that he brings from one of the Rishainim that there, he says, We pass in, there's no Shemeaka, the Baltzfil, you have to tell your own Sphira. So maybe there's something special rediscovering my relationship with the Rabbi Nishlaylam. Not the way, not saying David Amelach Tfilas, or this one's Tfilas, or that one's, say my words to my Rabbi Nishal in my place. Could this be? Maybe a special time. Is there really Barcheni? Like, like Yaakov said, what's the blessing here? Kim to Barcheni? By the way, I do want to say that at the end of this program, for those who speak Yiddish, because we don't usually allow any Yiddish, but something beautiful from Rabbi Shemayi Sternbach, at the end of this program, we're going to have a small keta in Yiddish. I listened to it three times. I was I'm so moved. You have to listen to the, almost to the end. A holy light was extinguished last week in the world. Somebody really holy. What does the Gemara say in Sanhedrin? Somebody a yid who is makabal apeshchina. Somebody special. If you speak Yiddish, something at the end of the uh, a thirteen minute clip that's incredibly powerful and moving. Anybody was it's Mo'iri Yerushalayim. That's I left that for the end of the program. Before we go to the program, we're going to ask the riddle of the week. This is a coronavirus riddle. You know, the Gemara in Ben Soira says a story that somebody came to Rabbah and he said that the Maradri, like the, uh, the dictator, tyrant, duke, whatever it was, if his particular said, listen, I'm going to kill you. And the only way I won't kill you is if you kill Yassel. You kill somebody else. So he came to Rab and he said, Am I allowed to kill the other guy to save my own life? So Rab said to him, very famous, What makes you think your blood is redder than the other guy's blood? So you therefore you can't. Nobody's blood is redder than the others. And therefore you have to die. Which is why, by the way, an interesting thing. This would be even if it was Ramosha Feinstein. If he came to Ramosha and he said, listen, I'll kill you unless you kill Yassel, Ramosha is the same clout. Who says, how do you know your blood is redder? 
So here's the question. There was, it could be that you're a Moshe Feinstein, but that person, Lafi the Kishrainis, that he was given, is doing a better job than you did for your Kishrainis. Impossible to gauge this, therefore you can't kill him. The mission says in Hyrius, right, let's say there's a, a boat, it's sinking, and you have to save somebody. We say, Kain comes before a Levi, a Levi before a Yisrael. Talmud Chacham Kaidim La Maritz, even if he's a Mamza. We say one person's blood is redder than the other person's blood. So once we have a Mishnah that says that when it comes to Hatzala, you have a choice who to save. You save the person whose blood is quote unquote redder, the Kayin before the Levi, Ish before Isha, wherever it is, the, the more important person. So maybe when it comes to this Maisa Ritzicha, we already have a Klal that yes, you say Chazis, Damati, Daksu, Maktve, if it is better. So Einachanami say Talmud Chacham should be, should be able to save his life at the expense of an Amoritz because his, his blood, halachically, is indeed redder. That is the riddle of the week. And why do I say it's a coronavirus riddle? Because when it comes to if there would be a shortage of medication, shortage of ventilators, etc., the, we discussed, would the mission in Hyrius become efficacious? Would it become ap- applicable? So it is, a, it is indeed a riddle, and we will, of course, announce the winner at the end of the show. Joining us from Lakewood is Harav Nechemya Gottlieb. He's the founder of TAG International, that's the Technology Awareness Group. They have 45 offices around the world, 400 volunteers. Rav Nechemi is originally from Eretz Yisrael. He was sent to America, the Shlichus of Rav Steinman. And afterwards, Rav Matisio Solomon, Lahavdol Ben Achaim Ben Achaim, should have Rav Shalema, asked him to form a digital uh, group to address this issue in our community. He was the architect of the city field, Asifa, many others. Welcome, Rav Nechemi. Yes, hello, Rav David. A pleasure being on. Rav Nechemi, interestingly, says you were the city field uh, you were the architect of the Asif. I actually wrote a kuntris for the Asif called the Internet Bahalacha. And we sold, distributed close to 20,000 of them, which was a good thing. The bad thing is, is I was left with around 1,500, which are stuck in my garage, which my wife keeps asking me, what do I want to do with them? If anybody well, wants what? one. People are, people are looking into a lot of interesting things during this corona. They're locked up, so maybe now's the opportunity to get rid of them. If anybody wants one, if they send us an email, we'll send it to you gratis. So, Reb Nechemia, tell us about um, the, the, the Rosh Hashivas of Lakewood came out with a letter saying the Moistis should not do Zoom shiurim, but do telephonic shiurim, and they want to keep technology out of the hands of the children. Could you, I mean, I imagine that you're knowledgeable about it, and it's part of you. I, I, can you give us a little bit of your thoughts on it? Sure. So um, we've picked a, uh, a tough topic, a topic on which uh, I'm sure emotions run high on both, sides of the, on both sides of the issue. I want to start off by saying that this hira was a hira for Lakewood and for Maizdis, which follow the lead of Lakewood, even if they live in different communities, but they, they would like to see themselves at least uh, that they're servicing uh, some part of their community, which is a, a Lakewood-type segments of the community, or they are trying to be mashpia on all the parents, that type of, uh, we'll call it, for lack of a better word, yeshivasha, yeshivasha hashkafa. And therefore, I think if there are people who are scratching their heads and saying to themselves, like, one second, like, my school gives kids to do homework online, or everybody in our community's kids are playing Fortnite, so just, uh, we're, not, we're not supposed to be using Zoom for school or whatever, if, if that's what you're saying, then probably you're right, and probably you should have your kids be learning, uh, be learning on Zoom, and I think that, uh, that might put to rest a lot of the questions that people have. I think that there are also a tremendous amount of people who don't have Internet, in, maybe even in their homes, or definitely don't let their kids go online, or only would let their kids go online occasionally with, uh, with maximum supervision, and they are also scratching their heads and saying, Okay, but you have kids, they're going bottle, they're not learning, everybody's climbing the walls. I mean, my goodness grief, if there's ever a shas atak, it's right here. So to go and just like, we're talking about das so I don't want to say that somebody would say this, but just to say, and say, we don't use the internet. I mean, now, 
now's the time. And of course, uh, you know, you can you can explain to everybody. Everybody knows your principles. Everybody knows what you stand for. You can explain to everybody. You can you can you can tell them that it's a that it's a shas So what's the problem? And just to add, just to add on to this, the people who are marketing these devices are telling us a that they are one hundred percent secure. So it's not like there's a chashash that people are going to get into something else. And b that it's it's not internet. Come on, this is a, 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 it's an app called Zoom. The tablet is to quote one of the people who was who was who was selling it, who said to me in a in a, in a closed meeting with some some of some of the gedolim. Come on, this is a plastic hamburger. What do you want? The kid doesn't see anything in it. It's not like he feels like he's using the internet. So it seemed to a lot of people some kind of a some kind of a mindless principle applying very lofty ideals in a place where they where they don't belong to be to be applied. Um, so if so, I, I think those are, in a large part, the people that we're addressing, that they should understand the policy that was handed down to them. And I would hope also that those people who come from different communities who it doesn't apply to, and I think in general maybe they don't understand uh, the position of the Rosh Hashiva so well, I would hope they would be able to walk away from this, uh, from this uh, little conversation saying, you know what? They have a point, you know. They they, they have something. They they have their viewpoint, and they have a point, and it it's in, it internally consistent. It's not my mahalach, but their mahalach also makes sense. In so, other words, let me let me interrupt, Rabbi Gottlieb. Let me interrupt. What you said about communities where kids are playing uh, Fortnite. I'm not a maven of Fortnite, but I I understand it's a, an internet game. So you're saying, of course, they should use Zoom. In other words, you're taking a stand similar to, let's say, you know, uh, just a shtalsu or hira. That So great Paiskim from the prior generation, the Lutzkirov, said, you know, when when girls were learning nothing, like they they were knitting, so you say Kalamalamid Bita Tarikim He says, Today they're going to school, mathematics, science, biology, kfir, they're gonna learn Abba Tyranish. He said, That's absurd. Right? right? So of course he says right. the kids getting educated, of course they have to learn Tyra. So you're saying if you're already playing this, you should certainly 100% be using Zoom. Now we're talking about That's kids correct. who are brought up al al Kedusha al Tyra, where they, 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 they were never on the internet. They don't know how to use a computer. And we're talking about should we introduce, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, sanitized tablets, right, for them so that they should be able to learn better. You're, you're just stelling the debate down in a very clear hyphen. That is the only right. area that the question is. Right, and I want to say that that just just to just to make it clear, unfortunately or fortunately, we're not split into two clear camps. There are many, many what we will call, for the sake of this discussion, the out of town schools. Even those at the, at the yeshivasha out of town schools, they have a mixed clientele. So that's why that's why I said that if the school is definitely all basically of the clientele which is using the internet or on Fortnite, which is a cute way of saying it, or or if the school doesn't stand for trying to promote the the the, the Tyrus ideals, then I think it's a no-brainer that it should be using Zoom. And and uh, I want to add on. Rabbi Rabbi Gattel, mixed, let, let me just I want to add on. Yeah, in, go ahead, the schools, yeah. in the schools where we have that mixed clientele and at least the 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 official hashkafa of the school, whether all the parents are are, are have bought into it or not, but the official hashkafa that they're trying to give over is that Tyrus Hakodesh hashkafa. They're also it's more debatable, but they're also that's something that Rosh Hashiva's felt that we that we should go we should go to the to, to the to the highest common denominator rather than the lowest common denominator. So before you, we get into that debate, I want to just mention one other thing. Chabad is an avid user of technology, but certainly one segment of Chabad, which is the shluchim who are mamish shluchid the rachmana shluchididan ushluchid rachmana. Who somebody sitting in Timbuktu or three, uh, you know, trying to be mechanech their kid, and the shear is given worldwide by Zoom. So uh, you know they use it because it's mamish beger the leka darka achrina, right? They don't have right. any other way. And so, but just saying, absent those two cases, now let's go to I'm a Lakewood parent, I'm climbing the walls, my kids are home now, ready for two months, and by the way, Rabbi Gottlieb. I'm going to venture to say it could be till the end of the year. And I don't mean the school year. I mean the year. could be this way for another eight, eight or nine months, right? We don't know until a vaccine or good testing or a cure comes out. I mean, because I don't think, you know, people say, oh, by November, it's for sure going to open. By, 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 by July, for sure. And my only shy on this is, is that is July a better time to die than in April? <laughs> well, right? said, yes. so, 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 
now some parent says, look, my kid's going to be home now for 10 months, and I want to get him one of these sort of these dumb tablets. They're sanitized dumb tablets. And Rosh Hashiva's position is no. And so explain that position. Like, what is he? It's basically a picture phone. He can't do anything. Why not? Okay, so I want to I want to take a step back first and just uh, j- just just frame this debate a, a, a little bit. A lot of the people who who were 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 promoting promoting these devices, they were promoting it because of Bittel Tyra, and they said, "Look, the kids are at home; they're not learning Tyra. It's Bittel Tinek Shabbos Rabban, and so on and so forth." Well, yeah, of course, once they have it, they can learn Limudei Chol. But this is the Taina which they came to the Rosh Hashivas with, and I have a klal, I have a rule. That when you have people who are mice and nefesh for Tyra, Yem and Valaira, that's what they stand for. And then you have on the other side, again, I'm not, I don't want to make a generality, but what we'll call for the sake of convenience, Balabatim, people who are Kaveyit in La Tyra, but they have not given away their life. And all of a sudden, it is the Balabatim who are chas on Bittel Tyra, and the Rosh Hashiva seem to think that Tyra is out the window. So I have a cloud that something's askew just at the get go. There's something, there's something wrong over here. So that's, uh, that's just to, to, to put the debate in the right light. I, I, I think if anybody thinks that the Rosh Hashivas are not plugged into Talmud Torah or not plugged into the needs of children, remember, the Rosh Hashivas and Kedeli Yisrael in general spend hours every day counseling people and talking to them and giving advice to the Rabbeim. They're all on multiple varachinuchs. They're no strangers. They're no strangers to, the, to, to, this, to, this, to this topic. And, and I can tell you from, from, from speaking to them and knowing how many people spoke to them, the amount of thought that they put into this dwarfs the amount of thought that your average person who has a rock-solid opinion put into it. And by the way, this was not something which was a no-brainer for them. This was something which they put a lot of Hakira and Drisha into. And they thought about it, and they asked opinions. They had another meeting, and another meeting, and another meeting. And the Tzad... The tzad, the bittel taira, and just climbing the walls and sanity outweighs, outweighs everything else. Was a very serious tzad. It so was. what is it? So, but so tell us, it through. tell us the secret. No, what, so what's the what, what's the position? Explain it. So here's the here's 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 the answer. The answer the answer is this: that internet. I want to use I want to use a uh, I want to I want to use a muscle. Everybody knows that we saw Salanta, the famous Meister, when he was in when he was in Vilna and it was in Kippur and uh, and they had the the Magefa going on. So he went ahead and he made Kiddush and Shul and he went ahead and he and and and, and he ate. Now nobody was afraid that there was going to become a pirza in Klal Yisrael that people eat on Yom Kippur. Why? Because that was the reason why he had to make Kiddush. Because every person who was eating was choking and gagging on his food and feeling terrible that he had to eat on Yom Kippur. But with internet, it's not like that. In the most yeshivish places, the best home, the best kids, internet rules the world. Internet is cool. Internet is geschmack. Internet is powerful. Internet is what everybody's doing. And unfortunately, we have not raised a dar of children or a dar of parents, except for a few people who are zeicha to sit in the Dal Amashal Allah and they were never toy in time internet. But everybody else, we're all thrilled with the Internet. It's very powerful. It's very useful. It's very hard not to view it in a positive light with all of its negatives. And the heart of the strategy of G'day Yisrael to keep Kala Yisrael safe from the pitfalls of the Internet is to try to inculcate in us that feeling that Internet is a massive bidyevid. It's something which, when you look at it in its totality, it doesn't really pass for us to be using it. We have to use it, no question. I myself... I myself use internet on a, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis. I'm running a massive organization. I also have a business which, uh, which, which I run for my Parnassa. We use, we use, we use internet, and I, I, understand, I understand the power and the necessity. And I also understand from personal experience the allure of the internet and how hard it is to view something so, so useful with suspicion and keep up our guard against all the pitfalls that are there. We don't have the filter. We don't have the technological answer to making the internet a freebie, to making it something which is totally safe. We have certain safeguards which are put into the place, but in the end, it's about us. And it's just like a person, the most apt muscle that comes to, to, to mind is like our relationship with food. In the end, if you are not conscious of your food intake and you don't have the right relationship with food, you can diet from today till tomorrow. But if you don't change your mind about eating, you don't recognize that eating is something we do to stay healthy, and that is what I'm doing. And I'm not eating for emotional reasons, and I'm not eating... You know, for Tyson, I'm not reading for social reasons, then you're never going to lose weight. So this is the heart of their strategy. There is no question that taking an Internet device, kashered, not kashered, which, by the way, many of these kids are halishing their hands to get their hands on this device and putting it in the hands of kids for months at a time. There's no question that this is firing their imagination 
and it's it's showing them it's showing them that b'shasat chak, whatever we consider a shasat chak, when it's important to us, all of a sudden we can use the internet. Yeah, you can split hairs and say it's not internet, it is internet, it's filtered, it's not filtered. Even if that's true, but even if people say b'derech leitzanus, you say you see. The Rashiva's got with the program when it's their thing. Yeah, for Torah. So for me, it's something, something else. Even if people say that, but they're leitzanos, but leitzanos achas decham me'atichachas. The bottom line is, is that what we would be doing on multiple levels, it's true for the parents as well, and for the children, on multiple levels, basically the message that we would be giving to people and the experience that we would be giving to people is that in a pinch, internet is okay, and once people are toyim that tam, it's very, very hard it's very, very hard to take that away or to get it out of their mind. To go back to the plastic hamburger analogy that I, said, that I said earlier, many of the kids who are sitting with that tablet, you know what they're thinking when they're supposed to be listening to their Rebbe? They're thinking, oh, shucks. Why doesn't it have games on it? Why can't I do something? They're going to try. They're going to try. They're going to try. They're not going to be successful. They're going to go out and get themselves a tablet. There's no, there's no, there's no, question, there's no question about it. What I, what I told that, 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 that Yid, uh, who, who meant well, by the way, that it's not a plastic hamburger. It's a plastic cigarette. And if a kid sits with a plastic cigarette in his mouth for enough time, he's going to go and get himself a Marlboro because he has to taste, he has to taste the real thing. So this was the overwhelming sentiment here that in the final analysis, everything we have worked, and by the way, only very partially successfully, we're not so successful at giving this message to people. We're working on it and we, you know, we're doing, we, we do educational programs in TAG and so on and so forth, but it's an uphill battle and we're hoping that this next door, which comes prepared into adulthood, I mean, basically when we talk about people at our age, we fell into the digital world. It crept up on us little by little. We don't have to go through the history here, but you remember when a computer had a floppy disk when you couldn't save multiple versions of a Word doc because there was not enough memory. Little by little, it crept up on us. We didn't have time to collect our thoughts. We didn't make a conscious decision when we got married. You do want internet in the house. You don't want. It wasn't discussed in Shaduchim. We are hoping and striving to raise a dar, which makes much wiser decisions about internet. And the feeling was that this is going to go and throw all of that out, out of the out of the windows. Crystal, is this letter that they said mice shouldn't use Zoom for sure? Is it for adults too, or only for children? No, it's only for children. There's nothing wrong. As a matter of fact, Zoom is one of the most so, so, applications. So, Rami, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. This is the pushback, okay? You would agree. By the way, I um, I am a, a, a strong believer. Um, I'm a firm of I, I'm a firm um, well aware of the dangers of the internet. In fact, before this uh, inter- this interview, I googled thirty percent thirty percent of all internet usage. And when you consider that businesses can have 1,000 people aligned at a time doing work, so imagine what 30% is. 30% of all usage is for pornography. Just a staggering statistic, right? So, and so I'm well aware of, we had a mechanic on from Eretz Yisrael a year and a half ago that my, my, uh, my, my, I was almost shot after cause for saying, but he said on the line, he said 80% of the Bachram he deals with have viewed pornography. A well-known mechanic in Eretz Yisrael, right? So I'm very aware with it. But here's the question: You know, um, we have parents that they say, um, "I'm not going to send my kid to play group because they're going to get a cold," right? So they keep them sheltered in a bubble and a bubble, and then the kid goes to first grade, and the kid is sick the entire year. And the other kid went to play group when he was two; he got a sneeze, and by the time he was in first grade, at five or six, he had some inoculation, right? You would agree with me. You, TIG, uses the internet every day, right? You said, right? anybody who's in business, if you can't use the internet, you might as well drive an Uber. And even on Uber, you have to get your data through the internet over or an iPhone or a Samsung, right? So the internet is going to be as much a part of our lives as electricity or oxygen. There's two ways to, if we want to get anywhere in life, it's, unless you're staying in a yeshiva your life, mamish or kloy kodesh, or you're a garbage man, or you're doing some blue boom color. It's it's the oxygen. It's the electricity that the world runs on. So we have two mahalchem. Our kids could be sheltered totally until they're picked a date when they go to work. Put in your number, and then like boom, it's you know it's like to see the guy who finds out that if he goes to the mix one day he's not going to die. And so he says, if I can't to go to the mix, I didn't die. Mr. Tamaf I'm a chal Shabbos. I'm also not going to die. There's no inoculation. There's no training. The other way is, you know, here's a tablet, Yasala. And by the way, the internet is dangerous. It's like a gun. It's like a car. Abba drives a car. But if you get into the car, you'll kill yourself. 
and start training kids from when they're three and they're four. And they're th- the internet is like, it's like a, a magazine. Somebody could buy the wrong magazine. Or the, and this is the opportunity to be mechanach them rather than springing the internet on all these kids when they're 22 and suddenly, you know, at 24, whatever the age is, and suddenly they discover, oh my God, imagine what I could do with this internet. Two keystrokes where I am. Aren't we losing the power of inoculation, the power of education, and it, could it be almost counterproductive to your goal? Okay, so that's a great question. Are we losing an opportunity to give uh, to give our kids a... Are we... <laughs> let's phrase it like, like this. Alcohol. Are we anti-vaxxers? Like alcohol. Are we anti-vaxxers when it or, comes to the internet? Or alcohol. So. <laughs> How many... Until recently, Reb Re, 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 until recently, there was very few Jewish alcoholics because Jews knew it was for Kiddush, right? It was for a L'chai in right. between the fish and the thing. And then... By the, you have the, the Umay Sa'ilam, what is it? It's a scotch. It's, it's to get drunk with your friends. We had a chinuch in this. We have a, right. we have a chinuch in Ishus. We have a chinuch in Derech Heretz. We have a chinuch in Kibadav. We have a chinuch in Beinoy we have So here's the opportunity from young Vaizan. The internet is a very, it's like a car. It's a powerful, dangerous tool. And let us tell you some stories, the horror stories, but on the other hand, the good stories. So therefore, with this, and therefore, when it comes upon you, don't, you know, when you get that computer, it's like, oh my God, I was let out of jail. Right. So, Rev. David, let me tell you. First of all, th- this is a... Uh, it's, and I don't have an answer from the family. I don't have an answer. I'm telling the Shiloh, you know? I hear you loud and clear, and I, I hope I do. And I want to tell you, in truth, the answer is is long, and it's intricate, and it deserves a, a, a different conversation. I'm going to give a few pointers, but I want to tell you and our listeners that this is not a full treatment of the topic. It's a very complex topic. But I just want to give a few, a few, pointers, a few pointers to think about. Um, yeah, yeah let's, let's think about one of the examples that you gave. How about alcohol? Should we inoculate children by give, giving them to drink L'chaim when they're, when, they're, when they're 12? How about other things? I want, to ask you, I want to ask you a different question. How about drugs? Does anybody believe that that's a good way to go about the, I mean, my gosh, one day the kid is going to be 14 or 15, he's going to go to high school, and somebody's going to try pushing on him. Maybe but, but, but that's not a good... Oh, well, hang, no. hang on a second. No, we just, never use saying. drugs. It's a bad comparison. We never no, no, use for, drugs. No, I'm saying, I'm saying for um asylum, for um asylum, for people you know, who, who could take a joint. You know, they're, not, they're, not, they're not averse to that. How about, uh, how about, how about other, other things? The answer is, number one, that for the most liberal people in the world, anything which you are not willing to risk that your child should make the wrong decision, you shelter your child. Across the board, that's the way everybody does it. We don't introduce our children to things which we consider that they make the wrong decision. It's a tragedy. We introduce them to things which, okay. And the difference between the people who believe in introducing and who don't is whether if your child ends up in the wrong place, is that a tragedy or it's not a tragedy? And they don't believe it's a tragedy. So that's just to, to put the things in perspective. So I think that we don't inoculate to something that should never be used. So we don't have to inoculate for guns. He has a safe gun. It's, we're never going to have guns in our house for, for 95, 8% of, you know, from the people. We're never going to have drugs. We're never going to have. It's just a no. There's no reason to know how to use drugs. But food, yes, there should be an accurate. You shouldn't be overeating because obesity is one of the leading causes of death. Alcohol, we have a little by Kiddush, we make a L'chaim. But your Abba and we, we don't drink big, we don't have a double uh, boiler of Johnny Walker. So we inoculate the things that the kids are going to have to deal with in life, and we teach them how to deal with it. Something that the answer is just no. There's no inoculation. Internet, we agree at some point they are going to use it. So where's the training and how to use it? It should be now from childhood. You mentioned before you mentioned before other other things. I think also with I think also with alcohol that that's also a sliding scale at what age at what age people are introduced to or not, in, not, not introduced to. The bottom line is that you introduce a person at an age when you feel, when you feel that, they're, that they're old enough and wise enough and mature enough to understand how to make the right decisions. That does not include 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old when it comes to the Internet. And guess what? It doesn't include 45, 50, 60, and 70-year-olds when it comes to the Internet either. None of us. <laughs> These other things are things which a normative adult controls himself and he makes the right decisions. Internet is an area where nobody, I risk myself saying that statement, to say, <laughs> definitely people who are young enough to really, to really enjoy the Internet, nobody controls themselves. We're all obese when it comes to using the Internet. We are not principled, and introducing them at a young age when they're immature and they're more likely to see the thrill and to become 
to use light, to use loosely the word addicted than to, to understand how to use it wisely is not, a, is, not a wise, is not a wise policy. By the way, we don't have to teach people how to use the internet responsibly. There's not, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's not so hard to know how to do it. We have to instill in people a respect for the power and the lethality, so to speak, of the internet, which goes back to your car analogy. We don't need to put kids on a fake car when they're 12 years old and do something. We need to wait till they're 18 to put them behind the wheel when they can understand what it means that if you run a stop sign, you might die. And then, yes, then we have to do it with training. And here, I want to thank you for bringing up this point. I, I feel that as a tzibur, there is an enormous omission, which, halavai, Hashem should give us the Dishmaya, maybe to, to, to do something about it, that yes, people are released from yeshiva or girls are released from Beis Yaakov's without the proper training. And you're 100% right. Definitely, if you go with a mahalach, which says, that we're not going to introduce people to their older, then you have a chiyuv as a community to provide the right training. And I do envision that three months before a young man leaves Kailar or a bachel leaves yeshiva, whatever it is, whatever, if whatever stage in life there is, there should be shirim and classes and warnings and rabbonim or psychologists or whoever it is to speak to people, to give people techniques. And there are techniques. So that should be done. But it doesn't include so, empowering a seven or eight-year-old free access. So Rabbi Nechami, let, me, let me push back. Let me, let me push back at that, okay? I think that um, we don't teach a kid when they're eight how to drive safely because in all likelihood he's not going to get into a car till he's 17 or 18 or 16, right? Whatever it is, right? Which state, whatever, right? We don't, you know, it's it's just unlikely. Same thing with guns, etc. But I don't care where you live, even in Lakewood or Williamsburg or Borough Park, your kid is going to have some friend who has a phone or a computer or a tablet. And I'm just wondering whether we take a kid who's seven or eight or nine or 10 or 11, these are the days when puberty starts, and he's in his friend's house, and his friend has a computer or a tablet, and this kid says, hey, let me try it. And I think that there's no chinuch for that kid what to do. He doesn't know that if he presses the wrong button. Wait, whereas, whereas, what I'm just, you see, would you agree, Reb Nechemia, that the internet is arguably the single biggest challenge to our generation, for Kedusha, right? Would you agree with that? It's the biggest challenge. And you know what? Nobody speaks about it. There's no chinuch. There's no mahalach. There's no course book. It's like the biggest challenge in our generation, nothing. And I'm just yeah, wondering, we, the, ghetto wolf, have... the ghetto wolves have fallen down. Most yeshivas, it's not spoken about. And and the ghetto walls have fallen down. They, we don't speak about evolution. We don't speak about kafira. We don't, it's just, it's no go. And what happens? A kid walks into it, and boom, he has suddenly a shiloh and everything. Wouldn't it be great if from starting from young Vaizan, we taught the internet is a gun. It's a this, it's a that. It has to be done. It's like chametz on Pesach. These are the steps. Because he's going to see it in his, would you agree that even in Lakewood, he's going to see it in a friend's house? So, Rav David, let's now we're now we're on a, a strong point of agreement, and I want to tell you I want to tell you a few things. First of all, just to set the record straight, Tag has an educational program called Hineni. It's a two to three year program with a lesson every week for high school girls and seminary girls, which is being pursued in over eighty schools around the world. Incredibly rich, and we have a hotline, and we have a publication with a daily physic email. We have something called Hineni High Points. We have contests. It's Incredible. We have an Asifa, which brings under one roof girls from Vizhnitz and from Lakewood and from Scranton and L.A. So there is Baruch Hashem. And I'm telling you right now, and I'm making an appeal over the airwaves, we have ideas for a program for boys. We have a skamas of top Rosh Yeshivas in Lakewood, the frumest Yeshivas to bring it in. It's just a question of funding to get this thing to go. The, the idea is there. The concept is there. A few thousand dollars and we could have a program up and running. Now, to second what you're saying, I want to tell you what Rav Matisio said. Rav Matisio told me clearly that from a very young age, he said definitely in Lakewood, in the most yeshivish of schools, seven or eight years old, we have to be mechanic children about internet. And you are 100% right in identifying this as a weak point that we're not. So that thing, the chinuch, explaining, talking on their level, what they can understand and what they can handle on their level, explaining to them, you're 100% right, and there is a lack of... There's a lack of, of, of pursuing that in our, in our community. But I would venture to say that when we talk about preparing people for adulthood, that's one thing. When we talk about preparing teenagers for challenges, I would venture to say that kids who grow up in houses with Internet 
are more likely as a teenager to stumble across inappropriate things than the kid who grew up in the sheltered, in the sheltered environment. So that's there. Um, I just want to talk about the analogy okay. to a car, which you brought out, which I think, you know, it was introduced maybe 20 years ago by Matisio. I think he was probably the first one to say it at a at an Aguda convention, and he said, "Well, we have," you know, he said in his British English, "a motor car." So if you have a motor car and everybody understands that it needs seat belts, that was in a that was in an age when people didn't even understand that you needed filters even for the for your children. And he said, you know, you need seat belts and stop signs and so on and so forth. And it was a very apt example. But I think people who are still applying that are a little bit in a time warp because the internet is not like a car because nobody gets into a car and has a taiva to drive into a tree. We try our best to be safe. So if we have safeguards like, like, like seat belts, we're going to do a good job. But when we're online, we all want to drive into a tree. So that's something that we have to take into account, and therefore we have to use that, uh, I think we have to use that muscle cautiously. Okay. This was really fascinating. Let me ask you one question. By the internet of CIFA, uh, Rabbi Waxman said that a house that has internet is, whoever has internet is ain't loy chelik loy I'm just curious. Could you, would you ascribe to that? Was it, was it, kishkaga hayait simi How would you describe it? What's your opinion of that? Well, first of all, I just as a matter of principle, I think if Rabbi Waxman said something, you should ask him what he said or what he meant. I don't, I don't remember that being said at all. I don't think it was a house of internet. I, the internet Asifa was specifically, I can tell you from the back end of the planning, was to discuss unfiltered, unfiltered internet. Yeah, he um, said it from so Rav. He said a psak from Rav Ozna. He said he has a psak from Rav Ozna that whoever has internet is ain't like look like Lamhaba. And I remember listening okay, to so it and thinking, was, my goodness. I just want to tell you like this. I don't, uh, you know, of course, I don't argue with anything that Dalim say, and my opinions are, are, are not important. I will just tell you that every single Godel in America, every single Godel in America, and indeed in Eretz Yisrael, aside from Rav Ozner, gives on a regular basis, gives people a heter to have internet in their homes. The most Hasidic Shemaistas in the world do have, maybe excepting for Skver, all have a policy about how and when somebody can have internet in their home. So if, if that statement seems shocking. Maybe it is. I'm just saying definitely tag. We're here facilitating for most of clients so to have internet in their home. So uh, definitely something which I would say that the consensus of G'dayla Yisrael is that in the right, under the right circumstances, it, it is something which can be acceptable. Well, Reb Nechem, it's an honor to have you on. And I think that I speak for myself. I think that internet is the single largest challenge that Kal Yisrael has. Saifa Kedusha, Saifa Deus, Shalom bias, etc., and somebody who's made dedicated their life towards being mechanech people on how to use the internet, when to use the internet, and the shmiris and the filters. I think that you for sure have a, a front seat mizrach and ilum haba. That's whatever my opinion is worth. Thank you very much. I will take that as a bracha, and it was an honor being on. Atzlach Rabba. Thank you, Kalta. Joining us uh, is the Chabad Shliach of Minneapolis, the world famous speaker of Manus Friedman. I believe he's the most viewed rabbi on YouTube. Welcome, Ramanus. Shalom, shalom aleichem. So, Ramanus, the Lakewood recently came out with a letter from the Rabbanim where they to- they, they uh, discouraged the use of Zoom in Chenach. Mm-hmm. And I believe that the reason is, is they said, look, the kids, most of the children are, you know, uh, brought, that they try to bring them up, you know, B'Kedush or B'Tahara. The internet is a very dangerous place. And they, uh, you know, Mayasa ben Shalayechta, once he's introduced. So they said it's not worth the added value of seeing the Rebbe and seeing the class on Zoom to the dangers of bringing internet into the house, teaching the children how to use the computer, because today they're using the computer for one thing, and then a minute, you know, when, when you're not watching, suddenly, you know, you've opened up Pandora's box and Chas Shalom. So I understand that Chabad has a different opinion. And if you could just tell us about that briefly. I think the opinion is that we know that kol hadrochem becheska sakona. That's life. That's the world. Oilam haze is, uh, is, 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 a, is a mokim sakona. That's the given. So what are we supposed to do about that? It doesn't say any place that you should hide from the sakona. It, it, it's telling us how to fix the world not to not to protect ourselves from it. Well, so respectfully, job... Rabbi, Rabbi Friedman, the Gemara does talk about if somebody's going to go down a derech, 
that he knows over there that there's Nashim Bekvus, Bishas HaKvisa, right? The Gemara says he's not allowed to go that derech, and the only way he's allowed to go that derech and Kapaskin Shulchan Aruch is if he's an Oynis and there's no other way for him to do it. Mm-hmm. Right? So, for example, based on that, Ramesha famously writes, he says, if somebody has to go on the bus to go to work, even if he's afraid that he'll bump into women, etc., he says he should avoid it as much as he can, but at the end of the day, you have no choice. But clearly, we do have the concept, yes, but when you don't have to, when you don't need that sakana, halachically right. and common sense, you should certainly avoid it. So the argument oh, yeah. here would be is, you don't need this in your house. You don't have to teach your children until they're at a later age how to use a computer, how to be on the internet. So why enter into a sakana when there is another derech to do, to go? Even if the other derech is longer. Shalom Shala yeah. says, even if the other derech is longer, you go to the other derech. Of course. Of course. So you, you mentioned two things. If you are in, in this, if you have uh, if you have no choice, or it's unavoidable. Those are the realities, right? To most people, the internet and its and its uh, temptations are unavoidable. If you don't have a computer in your house, your 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 kids have a friend who has a computer, and and so on and so forth. So the question is, is it avoidable? If it is, Ashley Chalkam, absolutely. If you can do without it, you're, you're, you have a special bracha. But how avoidable really is it? So instead of being on the defensive, Chabad goes on the offensive. We're going to use this for Kedusha, and as far as all my children are aware, they know that the Internet is for learning, for teaching, for reaching out. Yes, there is a Sakana too. But that's not what's, you know, what's in, 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 in their eyes, the Internet is, is, a, is a base medrash. I guess I have a beautiful little story. There was a guy, a uh, uh, Lubavitcher uh, spokesman. He lives here in Crown Heights. And um, in, the, in the years when the Rebbe was giving out dollars on Sundays, you know, he would take his, his children, his grandchildren, Every Sunday, they would go get a dollar from the Rebbe. Anyway, he was sitting at a uh, Sheva Brachas uh, with his Einikel on his lap, a two-year-old, and uh, a Schnatter came over and asked for an Adava. So he takes out a dollar to give to the to the man, and the baby points at the dollar and says, Rebbe. To the right. child, the dollar bill meant Rebbe. So it's all in the perspective. What do you see in the world? You can look anywhere and find a sakana, or you can look anywhere and find an opportunity for Avedas Hashem. So, Ramatis, you know, I, I just Googled it. One in every three searches on the, on the internet is used for pornography. 30% of the uh, internet's usage is pornography. So, you know, is there an age? Like, do you put, like, 10-year-old boys, 13, is there any age like that you start? Like you say, like there's a certain area when you say at this point the person could practice judgment or is it from really at all ages? No, you have to be, you know, eternal vigilance. Of course you have to be on top of it. Like with anything else. You send your kid off to camp, you have to wonder and worry and protect but, them. But, but Romanus, would, would, you, would you have, a, would you keep guns at home? A lot of people won't say. They say, look, as much as I lock it up, God forbid a kid gets a gun, a hand on the gun. Most most accidents happen to the children of gun owners. Fact, right? I mean, isn't it like sort of saying, you know, guns are good to protect yourself. We all have, believe in the Second Amendment rights, etc. But it's just too dangerous to keep a loaded gun at home. And I think that they're saying it's like keeping a loaded gun at home. Well, it, it, there's a there's a real difference because nobody really needs a gun, and it's certainly not inevitable that your kid is going to find a gun somewhere. So it's, it's really very different. If if it were so easy, if it were that easy, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. The internet is almost unavoidable, except for the really exceptional few. It's unavoidable. So it's like wine. Many people abuse wine and get drunk on it. Jews hardly ever get drunk on wine because we know that that's for Kiddush. (laughs) 
you're going to get drunk, you have to buy some expensive, <laughs> some expensive scotch or something. So it depends on you know you can make from it what what you what you want. You can turn it into a dovisha bigdusha, or you can use it to do, to to destroy yourself. But well, we had a mechanach. Or we had we had a mechanach from Eretz Yisrael who said that Rav of the Bachram that he he's a mashkiach. He said Rav of the Bachram have watched porn. He said it's a majority right. and it's not fifty one percent. I yep. would say not fifty. I don't think Rav Bachram get drunk. So mm-hmm. it, I I think that the ease of it, I mean you know it's 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 really dangerous. I mean that's that's what they're and 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 I understand you saying it's inevitable. Let me ask you. Let me sort of give it the following twist. You know, there's a there's a Torah that says you know when 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 the Klal Yisrael left the Mitzrayim, right? So the carbon Pesach has all kinds of it has to be eaten only only lemenuyav, right? Ishal Mishpachta, only to the Menuya, but it has to be eaten in an exact, exact, exact way. Everything. Sukkis, which is the last of the Mayadim, Kol Yisrael Ruyim Leishir B'Sukkah Echad. Any type of Sukkah is Mata, Daifan Akuma, Gud Asik, you know, Paretz Murbala, Oymed, Shtayim, Vafilu Tefach. So Chesidim say, you know, in the Sifrei Machshava, they say, they say when, when Kol Yisrael was leaving, Mitzrayim, which were in the Yemei Sphira now, they were young, right? Yemei Nurayach, Schachilach Yemei Nurayach. A child, you have to be very careful what you expose him to. So it had to be only Lemenuyav, it had to be Tzli, it had to be this, Chamitz B'mashahu. Sukkis is already the end of the journey. You're mature, it's after Kabbalah Satayra, it's after Shavuos, etc. Then already it could be, you know, Kol Yisrael Re'elashah B'sukkah Echad, so I think both Mahalchem are true, but it depends where we are in what we're in the iteration, in the process we are. So would it make sense when they're saying, look, we don't want our kids on the internet. If a guy goes to work and like you say, it's inevitable, so there ain't a Hanami over there. But why do you want to show your 13, your 14, your 11 kid where one curious a kid in two curious strokes is in Shell Tachtis? That's, that's the other side of the argument. And, it, and it's a good argument, and, and it's something to really worry about. But the the, um, the balance of teivara in everything, uh, we're we're telling children that internet is pure ra, and it's not true. And eventually, they're going to find that out, and they're going to use that argument. No, it's good for this, and it's good for that, and you need it for business, and you, and, and we're going to be caught, you know, with a still. So right from the start, we have to tell children the MS. There's Ra, and the Ra is terrible, but there is Tev, and the Tev is fantastic. And Meruba Mida Teva, the good outweighs the bad. That way you've protected your child internally, not by having filters on the, on the thing, which you should have, but internally the child is protected because you've taught him right from wrong. There is a right it's not all wrong, because it's going to turn out, you know, we have to tell children that non-kosher candies taste really good. You have to tell them that. It tastes good, but that pleasure you're not allowed to have. But if you don't tell them it tastes good, what happens when they find out that it does? So you can't lie to children. you got to tell the MS. And the emiss is not all black and dark. The emiss right. is that there's toiv ra. Look for the toiv, be devoted to the toiv, and the ra won't get to you. It's a much healthier, safer, and truer path. So yep. being afraid of the ra doesn't doesn't really make it go away. It gives it more koyach. But so let me you ask you a thing. Chabad question. Let me ask you a Chabad question. The Rebbe was one of the first people, was one of the first people to use the radio for our Right? Yes, he, uh, Rabbi Tights. Yeah. But famously, he had the Maimorim on the, uh, on the, on the radio, et cetera, right? In, uh, yeah. in 1960, WEVD, right? right? The, the, the Rebbe's class in Tanya, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, Rebel was very supportive. So here's my question. Is it possible 
did Chabad's opinion change? Why do I say? The French Revolution in 1789 changed the restrictions on the world, the great emancipation and for, the, for the world in general, and for Jews in particular, that they were now allowed to go to school, they were allowed to get educated, they were allowed to own land, they were allowed to be tradesmen, etc. And Napoleon, following that, was very pro-emancipating the Jews. And when he attacked Russia, the Tsar was a notorious anti-Semite. Napoleon would seem to be an Ayav Yisrael. And on numerous occasions, he, you know, the, the, the Balatanya famously came out against Napoleon and pro the Tsar. And he, his, he said, even though Begashmius, there's no suffix that the Napoleon would be better for Kal Yisrael, but Baruchnius, with his iron, you know, saw a thousand, hundreds of years into the future, what will the emancipation do? And at the time of the pre-emancipation, probably 90% of Yiddishkeit was from. You know, at the end of Haskalah, it ended up where today it's 90% fry. It inverted itself. So Be'en Pekicha, he said that he's more worried about the Ruchnius than the Gashmius, and better that they should live in impression without emancipation and B'lai bin Yerei Shemayim and Erlach Eden and have all this, you know, the new waves, education, removing the veils of the world, our eyesight, opening up our vision, etc. That's a biggest sakana. Today, it seems we've inverted, where Chabad embraces technology, they embrace the internet, they embrace shiurim online, like you say, they embrace, you know, they're all over the world, the shluchim. Has it changed? Has the sheet of the Balatanya changed over time? That's a very good question. But the Bekitzer, if I can, if I can bring, this, bring this out, Napoleon's uh, evil was the worship of the human being. That the human being is the highest, and the, and the, and then should be free to do whatever he wants. It's all about the uh, the greatness of the human being, and that and that is pure evil, and it and it's and it's and it's check it also. What we're what we're seeing today is the exact opposite. The Rebbe's endorsement of technology is because Leibara Hakadosh Baruch Hu Dover Lemagona. Everything was created for him, not for us. So, worshipping the human being is mamish avedazazah. But seeing that every technological advancement is meant to serve Hashem's purpose, that's exactly the opposite of Napoleon. But was the Rebbe's fear of emancipation and what liberty would do to people... Whereas today we we you know we we we're embracing we're saying look through the internet you can go anywhere and do anything and be marbitz tire anywhere and you know the kids with the internet they're all knowing has the, in that respect has Chabad changed? No, I, Whereas, I don't think so. Napoleon was against the ghetto, and the Tsar embraced the ghetto, the Pale of Settlement, and the Rebbe basically said, I want the ghetto, I don't want to break down the ghetto's walls by by embracing the internet. Isn't that the the essence of what it means to sort of breaking down ghetto's walls. No, no, no. I don't. I don't think breaking the walls is a bad thing, and I don't think the Rebbe would prefer living in ghettos, even the Alter Rebbe. No, it was it was the veneration of the human that that was the evil of Napoleon. Freedom is not a bad thing. You know, taking us out of Mitzrayim is. Uh, <laughs> no one ever regretted that. No, it was it was Napoleon's uh, shita about uh, who is God, and he considered himself God. He considered the human being God. That was pure evil, and for that, better to sit in, better to sit in a in a ghetto that the Ebrister created than to start worshiping yourself. But freedom was always a good thing. I think uh, Herman Wouk in the fifties said to the Rebbe, you know, this is not Europe. You can't tell Americans what to do. And the Rebbe said, you can't tell them, but if you teach them, they're free to do everything. So freedom is a blessing. As long as you see it as a blessing from Hashem, not as a victory for the human superiority or whatever. You know, that kind of narishkeit. The, the Rebbe saw every every level and every layer of the universe as in need of tikkun. 
You have to bring Kedusha, you have to bring godliness everywhere. So when the radio waves were finally broadcasting Toza, whether it was Rabbi Taitz or Rabbi Weinberg, the Rebbe was thrilled. This is a new layer, a new, uh, new you know, like, like the onion. It was a new peel being introdu- be having Kedusha introduced to it. Sound waves. There's Toza floating in the air. The devil was excited about that. And then when, when television was used to, to broadcast Fabringens, that was a whole new frequency. And that frequency was now experiencing Kedusha. And then the microwave came along, the internet, the, the Wi-Fi's, and now that's being brought into Kedusha. So layer after layer, the world, the universe is being conquered with Torah. So um, there's, there's, there's the mystical level of what's going on as well. And as we get closer to Moshiach, no part of the world can be left out. So on the contrary, we need to push the holy use of airwaves, of microwaves, of, 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 uh, of television waves. It's, you know, Milu es ha'oretz v'kif it's time to take the world back from unholiness and bring it back to its Kedusha. And yes, it is, it is risky. Manus, it's an Thank honor you. as usual to have you on with us. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Stay, for gesund, stay healthy. Yeah. Cold. Bye-bye. With us from New York, joining us is Dr. Eli Shapiro. He's, uh, uh, his doctorate is in education. He's also an LCSW. He's an expert in education. He's spoken at uh, a good uh, consortium of Jewish day schools, International Conference of Chabad Shluchim, etc. Welcome, Dr. Shapiro. Thank you. So parents are doing something they've never done before in their lives. They've been in social isolation, many of them, for seven weeks or so, six weeks, five weeks, depending. I'm already since after Purim, so it's close to two months. And they, New York State announced there won't be any more schools through the end of the year, uh, through the end of the school season, which is, means that they're going to be with their kids till July. There may or may not be summer camps. You know, I don't anticipate that there'll be a vaccine before, certainly before then. So it's hard to imagine. It's hard to understand why camps would open, certainly for people who have grandparents. So nobody's ever experienced being home with their children for two, four, six, eight months in a row. And a lot of times the parents are home because offices are closed. Talk to us about some of the challenges that this is creating and maybe some of the solutions. Uh, so we, we have a lot of uh, new experiences for everybody, new experiences for kids, new experiences for parents. Uh, and there's a lot of difficulty in adapting to that uh, in general um, when we uh, when we look at society today, we are the most privileged, wealthiest society ever, and uh, we also have the highest rates of anxiety ever. And so, uh, Dr. David Roseman talks about this. Why do we have this uh, this challenge when we ha- are so privileged and we have so much, yet we also have high rates of anxiety? And he identifies that anxiety really stems from the need to control things, and we we stress and we worry. And uh, we become irritable and fatigued when we're trying to control all the variables. And we we suddenly find ourselves in a situation where we really can't control any of the variables or really minimal. The the only variables we can control are uh, staying at home. Uh, So we're really limited. And so that elevates anxiety um, across the board. Uh, And then we also add into the equation that everything is being done digitally now. Uh, with distance learning and Zoom devices and distance uh, work, devices themselves contribute to elevated anxiety. And now you have parents and families that may traditionally have pushed back against bringing technology into the house or uh, utilizing the internet. Uh, And now it's become such a part of their lives. In addition to the pragmatic concerns, it's connecting to Wi-Fi and eight different devices, drawing on it and finding a place for each person to do their either schoolwork or, uh, or or their employment or related work. You know, we have all these challenges, all these new experiences that we're not used to that may come in conflict with our values and putting that all together 
uh, it really creates a challenge for many, many people. People need to recognize that uh, anxiety is a normal response to an abnormal situation. And so just identifying that, I found for many families to be helpful. But then we also have a lot of the pragmatic uh, challenges as well. So well, let me ask the question a little different. You're, you're home with your kids. You're half homeschooling them. You're either a father or your mother. You're going out of your mind. You've never encountered this in your life, right? Six months, four months, three months, home alone with your kids. You may not even have cleaning help because you don't want them tracking things into the house. Give us some chinuch ideas. You know, how do you prevent yourself from snapping, you know, getting frazzled? I mean, literally creating a very poor example. Give us some ideas. How do you live in a situation like this? So I think the first step is recognizing that this situation is not an ideal situation, and it's going to cause us to get frazzled, and it's going to cause us to feel stress. And very much like when you fly, they always say to uh, if the airbags, if the uh, if the um, air masks fall down, take care of yourself first, then take care of your kids. So I think it's really important to keep that in mind. That one recognizing that this is an abnormal situation and that uh, that there's going to be stress and there's going to be challenges. Also, taking care of yourself. Uh, it's important that that parents uh, take the time to go for a walk, clear their head, take a deep breath and uh, make sure that their ability to manage uh, themselves is intact before uh, handling a lot of the stresses that they're going to experience from their children. And also, I've been, uh, you know, thinking about uh, what Rabbi Fran said at the CMA Shas about perfection being the enemy of good. And uh, we need to keep that in mind as well. We're not going to be perfect. And accepting that fact will allow us to achieve goodness instead of perfection. So, as a parent, you know, keeping these things in mind, taking care of yourself, and recognize that we're in a situation that we're going to do the best that we can, uh, and and moving forward in that way. Another important piece to keep in mind is that this is temporary. This degree, uh, you know, there are certain things that are you know changed permanently, but this degree of uh, families 24/7 in the same house in the same Daladamas. Uh, it's a temporary situation, and you know, when there's a light at the end of the tunnel, it helps us to manage uh, in the situation. Most parents are not mechanchem, right? Give us a few chinuch tips. I mean, the schools are mechanchem. Now the parents are doing homeschooling. They're trying to get their kids to get either on the phone or if you have Zoom. Give us, give us some, you know. Parenting should, I, my wife has said this frequently, she said having a child should require a license, not, you know, to drive a car you need a license, to become a hairdresser you need a license, to cut somebody's nail you need a license, to bring up children, no license required, it happens automatically. Give us, you know, some advice for this particular period. So I think that we, we traditionally think of chinuch as an education endeavor um, and a lot of the research uh, is really looking at particularly what the, the job market is requiring these days uh, is really skills of managing projects and skills of uh, executive functioning uh, and, and less so the, the uh, academic nuance of being able to multiply fractions. And, and, uh, and again, I'm talking about general studies uh, more than anything else. But here we have an opportunity as parents that, yes, we're not mechanchem, we're not educators, but we have the opportunity to help instill in our children certain skills that they may not have had the opportunity to do before. So when we think about executive functioning, uh, you know, a parent can drive themselves crazy trying to get their child logged in for every class, uh, print out every sheet, to print, you know, to manage the child's day. But here we have an opportunity to help our children develop the skills in managing a new situation. So while there are going to be glitches along the way that our children are going to need help with, if we can sit them down and teach them how to log in for the class, if we can teach them how to print the document, if we can teach them how to create and manage a schedule, that's the most powerful chinuch and education we can give our children. We're giving them skills that will not only help them in the immediate, but these are skills that will allow them to propel into the future. And it doesn't just um, limit itself to the distance learning piece. In my home, you had mentioned that uh, the cleaning lady is not here, 
and uh, there are lots of things going on in the house, but my children now are doing their own laundry. They've been taught. Here, you take your basket, you go down. They learn how to measure the amount of soap to put in the, uh, into the washing machine. And uh, this is a, a new skill that they've developed. Uh, and it's not so much just knowing how to do laundry, but it's taking that sense of responsibility and managing their needs in a way that in the past we never really have taken the opportunity to teach our kids uh, and uh, in this case, uh, we have the opportunity and a need to, to fill. You're saying, if I allow me to transpose it, you're saying that your child will rarely in life bump into an isosceles triangle. But creating yeah, yeah. a schedule, knowing how to be responsible for your schedule, how to log on, how to link off, maintaining a schedule, doing the laundry, helping with dishes... It's life skills are much more uh, greater likelihood that they will need those than they will need, you know, trigonometry. And that's a, a, this is a wonderful time to teach them those right. skills. When, when I was in school um, and, and having to learn, you know, algebra and, and multiplying fractions, and uh, I was less than interested. Uh, the teacher always said, you know, you're not going to walk around with a calculator. And uh, it seems that today we do walk around with calculators. So that particular skill set, I'm not minimizing the importance of a formal education. But, uh, you know, it, we're in a temporary time that is presenting us an opportunity that in addition to the, te- the, the standard education that our kids are receiving and, you know, w- discussing where the uh, academic gap might be over the few months that they weren't in a formal school setting, the opportunity that this presents to us to give them uh, the opportunity to develop certain skills, uh, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it would be wasted if we didn't take advantage of it. Okay. What are a few absolute do not, don'ts? You're home with your kids now, and you say temporary. I see this could be six months, three months, nine months. I mean, I don't know how, I'm not sure exactly how temporary it is, but give us a few absolute don't, you know, these are like third rail. Don't do this. What would they be? I think parents uh, don't beat yourself up uh, if you didn't have a perfect day. You know, we all are going to have days where uh, we are better than other days. And uh, the, the idea of perfection being the enemy of good, I think it's something that we have to keep in mind at all times. We're never going to get it perfect, and we have to focus on doing our best and and really focusing on creating an environment at home that uh, keeps kids happy. We want our kids to be happy. We want them to walk out of this with the opportunity for growth. And sometimes we get caught up in the nuance of it, uh, trying to make sure that the exact schedule works out perfectly and, uh, you know, that they spend the exact amount of time uh, outdoors versus indoors, on a screen versus off a screen. And and we're never going to get it perfect. We just have to do the best we can. And it's important to recognize that uh, we uh, aren't in control of all the variables and accept that. We have to accept what we can't control and do our best to control what we can and uh, keeping that in mind. So I I think the biggest don't is don't forget all that. You know, don't forget that uh, we're in, in a situation where we can just do the best that we can. And, and, and let me still sue, you know, the the Gemara says that there were, Four perfect people in history. The Gemara says everybody dies because of hate. There were four people died. Bita Shal Nachash. I believe it was Binyamin Ben Yaakov. It was Amram, the father of Moshe. It was Yishai, and one of the kids of David. I don't remember who it was. And they never did an Aveira in their lives. They they lived perfect lives, and we don't know anything about any of them. Basically, as our leaders were Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov. Ramban says Avram Chata. You know, Yaakov, Vayicharaf Yaakov, Barachel, right? You know, Yaakov with with all his difficulties with with Lavan and 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 Chlifas Maskurti changing and trickery, and then we have Moshe Chata with the Meimariva. So none of the perfect people make it onto the Jewish map of of of, of greats. So we don't seem to, as a Jewish people, we don't celebrate perfect. We celebrate human, not perfect. And you're suggesting that this is a time for us to remember how human we are. Well said. Yeah. So it's the end of six months. Let's say pick that to the end of the six months. If there's, when we're going to look back, it could be a wasted six months. 
six months in quarantine, six months in a gilded prison, depending on your home, you know what, uh, or it could be sort of like, you know, the cat in the cradle. These were just six months my children will remember forever. These are the six months when instead of running off to school, they got to spend it with their parents. How do we how do we create it that we look back and we say, for our kids, these were the happiest six months? What's what's that one or two things we should do? So uh, a, a common phrase that I use when it comes to technology use and life in general is uh, being thoughtful and deliberative. Uh, we have to be thoughtful and deliberative. And exactly the point that you're making is we need to keep in mind what do we want it to look like at the end of this period. Uh, Stephen Covey talks about uh, be, begin with the end in mind. So exactly what you're saying is in six months from now, how do we want to look back on this experience? Um, and we can then shape the narrative and we can shape the experience based on what we want the outcomes to be. Uh, so if we want it to be that our children remember that, wow, on a Wednesday afternoon, we were able to take a family walk. That's amazing. You know, a socially distant family walk. Uh, if we want it to be that our kids remember that there was quality time spent with each other, if we want it to be a time where our kids remember that they developed certain skills, you know, when our uh, kids are, you know, when our boys are getting married uh, down the road and uh, their wife is so impressed that they know how to do laundry, they'll be able to uh, remember back, oh, this was, I learned this skill during, you know, COVID-19. So we can utilize these opportunities to develop these skills, and really keeping in mind what are the memories that we want our kids to have. Do they want the memories of us being stressed out and angry and aggravated and irritable, or do we want it to be memories of growth, of closeness, and of uh, a shared family experience that strengthened everybody? Six months of Cholamide. Um Yeah, uh, but even more than a Cholamide. Cholamide, we have the stress of planning trips and activities. We don't have that stress now. Well, Dr. Ellie, thank you very much for your wonderful, kind, and thoughtful advice. Thank you. Thank you. Joining us from New York is Dr. Mayer Wickler. He's a well-known psychotherapist and family counselor with offices in Brooklyn and Lakewood. He's the author of 12 books, many shurim on many lectures on Torah Anytime. He's uh, a Talmud of uh, the Boston Rebbe, of Reb Shleimer Brevda. An upper Minsk Rebbe Davin Bar for 40 years, Lahavu Ben Achaim Ben Achaim, and Hagoyin Roshmul Kamenetsky. Welcome, Dr. Wickler. Thank you. By the way, I, I had one experience. I was in Boston many years ago. <laughs> many, when I was a Bacha, and I went into the Boston Rebbe to the Kabbal Player. So he looked at me. So as a Yeshiva, he said, Would you mind answering my phone for a little while, the Shilas? <laughs> I was I was 21 or 22 years old. I said, he said, yeah, you could pass in for me. Don't worry. And he left. And the phone rang. And I picked up the phone. And somebody says, I said, hello. He said, Rabbi? So he said, I, should. I said, yes. He says, I have a question for you. So I'm thinking, you know, I was the yeshiva bach. I knew your vomits backwards and forwards. I mean, she says, um, she says, I have a product. It's kosher for Passover. Can I eat it after Passover too? And I, that was the first sock I made in my life. I said, absolutely, you can eat it after Pesach. And I, I'm, I, many years later, and I still think I passed incorrectly. <laughs> yes, and I, I, I see the, the Boston Rebbe had good judgment in, in putting you in charge of his, uh, his phone at that time. Yeah. So let me ask you, we're going through a time of um, an, sort of unprecedented in our lives, maybe in many, I don't know, decades, maybe centuries where people are locked up, the whole world, from Jeff Bezos down, is locked up, right, Badad, and the Loi Toi Adam Levada, I mean, there are never sadly people who are Levada, but even people who are with a wife, with, with stuck in the house, I should say stuck, in the home with children, because that's a pejorative. And, and we know that isolation can create real mental health issues. Can you give us, as a psychotherapist, some advice as to, you know, what do we do in this unprecedented situation? Okay. Well, first of all, not everyone is isolated. There are many families with uh, Kanai Nahara, many children, 
where uh, the thought of isolation would be a relief. Uh, they're, they're on top of each other 24-7, and uh, the normal breaks that we would expect under normal circumstances of the kids going to yeshiva, Beis Yaakov, the father going to, to Koilo or to work, and uh, the mother going out shopping, these are opportunities we don't have. So uh just want to point out that it's not just the, the Nisayan of isolation, it's also the Nisayan of being so so close together in cramped quarters uh, for such an extended period of time. Um, there's bound to be issues of uh, sibling rivalry that are going to be exacerbated when uh, children are on top of each other 24-7 and they don't get that break. When it comes to sibling rivalry, it's helpful when parents try not to become arbitrators because they didn't see the whole issue. They weren't there all the time. And in addition, it's important for children to learn how to negotiate their differences with each other without the parents stepping in and trying to sort things out for them. It's a social skill of dealing with a, an older brother who's bigger and stronger or a younger ch- a sibling that's smaller and weaker. And children need to learn that social skill of dealing with, with that power differential that exists because some children are older and some children are smaller on their own without the parents trying to, to, to micromanage it for them. So number one, I would recommend that parents try not to get involved as much as they can and let the children sort things out for themselves. That's one recommendation that I have. A second one is that even though we don't have the external structure of school and work and kolel and and uh, minyanim and so on. It's very important for people to try to to create their own uh, structure to the day. Recently, someone commented to me that uh, her husband is getting up at 10:30 every morning and driving her crazy. Uh, when before he was getting up at a normal hour, and, and but now he doesn't have that pressure and he's sleeping late and it's driving her crazy. So people should try to maintain a structure, not just for getting up and davening on time. Uh, not just talking about making zman kriyashman, zman tzvila, but having a regular seder for the for the davening, even if it's biachidus. And also with the family, there should be regular times for meals and not just whenever anyone is bored to go to the refrigerator. And there should be regular times for, for learning at home and regular times for relaxation. The children shouldn't feel that it's just a hefker and they can do whatever they want all day long. The parents should try to build in some structure sometime when we're together, sometime when we do things independently. And having that structure in the day can go a long way to ameliorating some of the, the stresses of this prolonged lockdown that we have. Almost writing out a schedule for the day. Yes, yes, exactly. That's what I, what I do in the morning. I make a list of everything I want to accomplish, and sort of at the end of the night I could check it off. But having a schedule, schedule time is for, you know. That's very helpful. So. What I've recommended is that sometimes it's better not to listen to the news and not to read the newspaper. But if you do happen to see an article about uh, some current report or finding or research or pronouncement by some government official, it's a exercise to try to find the positive kernel in what's being said. Not everything is 100% negative, and uh, there can always be some some kernel of, of positivity to, to latch onto that can give someone encouragement. So, for example, I was giving this recommendation, recommendation to someone recently, and they said to me, oh, that's well and good if they talk about the numbers going down and the deaths going down and the hospitalizations going down and so forth. But uh, what do you do when you have a report from top uh, medical experts saying that it, in, in, in his opinion, he believes that it it could be a resurgence, and it, it could come back again. And then, then where will we be? Then what's going to happen? So I said to this person, well, in that report that you said was completely negative, I heard two pieces of positive information. I said, really? What's positive about the fact that it, it could be a resurgence of the, of the virus and we could be hit again in the, in the fall with another outbreak? I said, well... Just read again that headline that you read to me. Well, 
Dr. I think it was Dr. Fauci, actually the person quoted, said uh, in his opinion they they could be a resurgence of the of the virus in the fall. What positive thing do you see there? I said, well, number one, he used the word could, and could includes also could not. He didn't say it will. He said it could. Now, if he, I'm sure if he was talking about the sun coming up tomorrow, he'd say the sun will come up tomorrow. He wouldn't say the sun could come up tomorrow. But since he's not 100% sure, he said there could be a resurgence, and that means it could just as well not be a resurgence. Well, what's the second thing? I said, well, the second thing is that he said, in my opinion. Now, he's not going to say, in my opinion, the sun's coming up tomorrow. He's saying, let's say the sun is coming up tomorrow. That's a fact. But he's giving a qualification. He's qualifying it. It means he's opening the back door. He's leaving himself room. So that's the kind of positive kernels you need to look at, look for whenever you're you're trying to digest the news. It's 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 I have Yamim Lirais Tive. Exactly. I have Yam Lirais Tive. Look look for the positive. Exactly. Correct. There was Lashon Hara also means when we when we paint the black light on the world, it's a self fulfilling destiny. It's just a and and if we we in everything we look at the other side of it, there, there could be a vaccine. The Rebbeinu Shalom will look out for us if we you know if we act cautiously and we're careful and we practice you know self distancing. We see many communities have don't have any deaths. Those that have done the right precautions. So maybe we'll be one of them. And Leroy's Tov, using a Muna to be well, be a Leroy's Tov. Exactly, 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 and that will lead to to a, a longer, healthier life. The uh, Yisha Chafetz Chaim, who wants to live long and wants to have a healthy life, then he has to train himself to Leroy's Tov to see the the kernel of of good and positivity and and, and optimism wherever he can find it. Gan sign is Eichid Gut. Right, doesn't. Right. That's right. Now the Gemara says, Arba me subite shal nachash. Four people were absolutely perfect. Now we would think, who are the most perfect people? Mustama Maisha, Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, David Abelach, David Malka, Meshicha. All four, if you asked your average child, he would know, have never heard the names. Right. You know, Amram, uh, Yishai, uh, the, the, the Ben of David, uh, um, Binyamin, Binyamin, all right. unheralded, unheralded people. Right. It doesn't seem the Jews ever respected um, or ever really aspired for perfectionism. Right. Right. We we wanted we want Anshe Kaidish Yuli the Katzgrab is that An Enosh is is the most as Adam, right? There's Ish Tzadik, right? Enosh is the lowest. It means human. Like he's a machla noishi. It's a human a machla that takes the human out of this world. It's the lowest darga. So the Katsuki said, Anshe Kaidesh. I wanted holy humans. I didn't want malachim, tzaddikim. I wanted the guy who usually eats two donuts. Maybe today he'll eat a donut and a half. I just wanted the minimum of just good enough is good for me. Yeah. Yeah. So that leads into what I was just going to gonna say. The Pasuk says the that Kadosh Baruch Hu reserves a special reward for those who are Yirei Shemayim v'chosh veshmo. And the Gemara says, well, Yirei Shemayim we understand, but what's the v'chosh veshmo? So the Gemara says, this is a reference to people who are trying to do a mitzvah and they're prevented from doing it. And Malei la'kosev, Aleim la'kosev, kilo also. They tried to do a mitzvah, they were prevented from doing it, they get credit as if they had done it. That's an example of what I call partial credit. You you didn't do everything you're supposed to do. You wanted to do a mitzvah. You weren't able to. You failed. But you had good intentions, and the Kaddish Baruch Hu rewards that. The same way a Kaddish Baruch Hu rewards our good intentions when we try to do a mitzvah and we're prevented from doing it, like we want to go to shul, we want to dive in with a minion, we want to go into the base medrash, the base medrash is closed, the shul is closed, the Kaddish Baruch Hu gives us credit as if we had done it, but we didn't do it, and yet he gives us credit. The same way we have to follow his example. We have to imitate a Kaddish Baruch Hu. and that means we have to give each other 
partial credit. Yeah. Dr. Wickler, what's the silver lining from this? The Jews believe that we, Ki im Berech Tzadi, Yaakov says to the Sarish Yosef, I fought, I got hurt, I'm not letting you go, I have to see the blessing here. What's the blessing here? There's many blessings. There's blessings for everyone who who caught the virus and recovered. It's a tremendous blessing. There's tremendous blessing for people who have been quarantined in their homes and have not caught the virus. There's tremendous blessing in that. There's tremendous blessing that the Kaddish Baruch Hu is showing us how much we want and need our Bate Knesios and Bate Midrashos and our yeshivas. And perhaps he's helping us to to realize the importance of our tefillah, that we should be davening, that he should open up the the, the doors of the Bate Medrash and the Bate Knesios. And perhaps in our in our private tefillahs, in our in our davening at home, we've been able to to put more kavana into our davening and to feel closer to Kaddish Baruch Hu. But all that's going on and and all the the suffering and pain that people have gone through, as well as the Yeshua's that we've experienced on a daily basis, that I I think it's it's been an opportunity for us to try to to reconnect and strengthen our our connection with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. And that may be part of the silver lining of this whole crisis. Dr. Wickler, thank you very much for your time. It's an honor to have you with us. Thank Thank you you for inviting me. No either my high tun dem shear farm guy see my wild on the sort for king case in kidisha case filicha hov zugna puvert and shot of the moilem with mama machshuvas in the take the nifty gewon a put take three can gemand guys are bium in wolf the labavit is lier in hanover in misery deutschland Bei allem weiß ich, bin ich der größte Lebarwitz der Chusit. Aber zu dem Lied, vielleicht ein mürdiger Kurs hat auf, der Lied hat mir eine gewisse Prinne mit Hammer gewähnt, in Geben zu verstehen, dass Kido und wie Chuy Wusoi, Schöne Udom, Bei Lumoi. Ein bisschen mehr wie Draht, die Jude zurück, Pirem, bin ich gewähnt in Deutschland, in Hannover, wenn am Mittag heißt, der Meilig vieles Lied hat mir dort nach hingeschickt, Mit der Buche Ratzadik, Jankel Perlmut, das ich heute noch brauche, das war nur gescheit, das war ein Teufel Marikim. Dort nur ein extra Spital, für Kopf-Operatien, für Kopf-Surgeries. Das ganze Spital ist geboten, eine Zierre von der Kopf, ein spiegeldiger Kopf. Dort nur zu Avenz Mimche, Professor Sami Majid, ein Rabe, von Iran, wo sie zu Avenz Künstliche in Aperieren, Leulein, die wir da verperieren, dem Kopf, dem Mäuer, dem Geisermäuer, dem Thalamus, dem Hypothalamus. Und da wollen sie mich, und da habe ich noch, wenn der Machler ist frei, kommen sie ja ein kleiner Perlmutter, die Freunde der Woche, noch der Operation in Etzisrul, und mir haben eigentlich vier Schlitte, die wurden gesagt, und die wurden gesagt, und ein Stück Abreiche, und da haben wir hinführen, und in Deutschland. Schön, da lege ich dann ein Punkt mit, wir führen dort, und in Deutschland. In der Mischung Tug bin ich gewöhnt dort nicht betont, zusammen mit Jankel und der Budelchheim Töwe. In der Nacht bin ich geschlafen dort gegenüber dem Hotel. Ah, Hotel heißt Mercu. Und dort bin ich gewöhnt, und gewöhnt allein, eine ganze Zeit, meistens die zwei, drei Wochen, bin ich gewöhnt dort in Deutschland allein bei der Nacht. Ah, schreckliche Platz, die Chuligane, die Datschen, um ein gefährlicher Antisemitism, sie dort in der Antisemiut. Kamen Pumen und auf der Dorf kann dort nach Gas, als ruhig den Takar hingeschrieben, Jude, CCC, Juif, auf Französisch, Simone mit der Hand, Abke de Kachas, dort noch Tel Tumen ist reichen. No, ich habe da mal rausgegangen, ich bin in der Lobby, ich reichen und raus von der Hotel, und mit dem Manager von der Hotel gesucht, er kann nicht nehmen, er kann nicht nehmen, kein Arbeit, er kann nicht sagen, versichert, also ich habe mich dreien, also in der Rosten, mit den Talesguten, mit den Pais, mit den Kappel, 
En ze draaien dat op een gas reich, want de muziek gaat naar het zimmer over de achtste stok, ze leidt die stok. En zo gaat het naar een extra hitte. Begraven over de daad, je mag ze maar altijd met zitten. Als die per woche, wat zie je daar door het land, kan ik reichen in de nachtjes, in een weinig in het zimmer. Ik heb een paar keer dood en bekend met de hemel op avond te schrijven. Ik heb een jonge wolf, ik heb een geriep van vader gevonden, ik heb een geriep van vader gevonden, ik heb een geriep van vader gevonden. Mijn gebeten brengt een pekkelijk van naas, ik kon me een andere conserven met de gescheiden. Ik heb een ganse remsel te twee, ik heb een geslept van hem. En dood en had hij me gebrengt koesje te eten in jede toeg. Ik heb een beetje gekocht, ik heb vlees, maar hij moest eten een beetje vijfde te lotsen. En als ik wat er merkt, ben ik een paar moeders, en ik heb een nummer van Spetool, gewend dat een beetje gebaat, ik ga dat een ganse schijn uit te gaan voeren, gezicht uit te voeren, en ik ga met hem verbrengt. En ik ben er ook van de spalers van die man, en die man met zijn zoon kimmelen eerst, en we zoeken alle moeders op de eerst, bij de loeze rio, en dan met bera, met de smomo, op de Hanover, vader van die man is dood gekomen, is kashim, jiddischkeit, nicht gewinnt, gur nicht, nicht auf einer große Schiel, nicht kann Mäuel, nicht kann Scheuchet, gur nicht, was hat sich dem mit Schmieres teuren müssen. Und er hat dort allein umgekommen, sah er der Eiden bei am Sprach, als Grimberg, die ganze Mischbuche, seine Schliche, mit ihm die ganze Welt. Er hat nicht mehr, nicht weiter, gegen ihn immer nach Telefonbüch, in Ungarn, probieren zu gessen, man nachher zu sagen, wer ist der Eid, der hat gerufen, er ist der Eid, er ist der nicht der Eid. In Deutschland ist es extra schwer, Ik zeg, we spoegen nemen, maaien, steden, als we ons kennen, als we veel moeder en heimische nemen. Of het samengekrafte regime van tijdelijke bespoegen, ze hebben gezegd, ja, de mama is hier, de tante is hier. En als we het doen, gaan we hem samen naar buiten, dan gaan we goed wel moeten. En we stellen een ganzen toek van Schieren. In de vrije, ze hebben gevoerd met Noord tot Ham genomen, dat nu een grote gemeente, een grote gehele van Russische, het geleerd Russisch. En het aangebrengt zich in de heim met een auto, een paar Russische Jieden, geleerd met zijn psyche, in Schmaïs, Ruhel, Jiddischkeit, Eppes, een paar nog gedenkt. Met hoe gaat het gaat, als we in de schools dood, in de schoolen eindigen, dat er heim gingen met kinderen, Jiddische kinderen. En het is ausgeleerd, door een bachelor op de wereld, door een schabbers op de wereld. Maar dan heb je van studenten, van jiddische, van meidelstudenten, de ganze toek en de ganze nacht is er van nemen. Ze proberen, treffen jieden, met elkaar op de ganze jiddischkeit. Het is me gezegd dat de groei simcha is, want doe dat met vier jieden, hoe ze nog zo'n mam is, en dan beginnen ze om de teuren met ze, kapoel hem daar eigenlijk niet schab is, en dan maakt hij minje rosje schoen, en dan minje om kippen, maar veel geriefen van minje kreeg aan Megille, Dort noch, weil er Maas hat er gemacht, die Eulen hat nicht kennt, kommen bei Nacht, hat er gemacht, die Krise an Megille, dann ist es dann noch mit, und wenn ich habe gefallen, die ganze Megille leine dort, bin ich nicht gegangen, ich wollte auf dem Namen fliegen, ich bin nach Zürich. Aber ein Kerl, den ich mit, ob ich speziell gelernt kenne, ihn habe gesehen von mir, ein Mann, ein mischinniger Mitzler, mit seltenen Talenten, seltenen Geschreines, er kennt sich an Eis zu geben, er kennt Sprachen, er redet mit Älteren, so wie mit Älteren, mit Jüngern, so wie mit Jüngern, mit Kindern, so wie mit Kindern, in mit der Heine, mit der Heines, in der Arbeit, nicht mehr verzeiht, dass er hat schon dort mal Flieger gewinnt zu machen, gewisse Connections mit Politikanten, mit hohen Beamten, er hat gemacht dort eine große Nerechanike Party, in der Meer dort von Hannover gekommen, in der Boot schon dort mal bei Schabal, En ik vroeg hem, heb je jongen wie geschreid ze met panuze en met je zich zeer sterk, die alle rinsel, wat ze hem gebrengt, verkoopt er een moel van er aan jieden, dat doen aan over twee, drie moel aan jou, grote exhibitions van elektronics, of van diamant, van jewelry, en ze kiemen een moel aan met jieden, daarvan ze alle baven te schlieren, ze me riften, me kiemten, me verkoopt een beetje, en probeert er, ik dacht ze me, heb ik gedaan, kloed, aan zijn vrouw, neidt een beetje, maakt een beetje zinsige kleider, Aber er möchte sich stark auf Panuse, dass ich allein hinterhalten, er probiert zu bekommen von der Regierung, kommen wir nicht aktiv hin. In Vermögen ist wohl geworden, man muss sich fragen, ich habe weggefunden, aber ich habe gesagt, Benni, ich muss sich fragen, ich habe gesagt, ich habe gesagt, Benni, so gesagt. Die Betrange Mann, wo so ruhige Heid gekannt, man sieht es an, in Leben, sei begeistert mir, ist aus dem Schnittigen geschrien, ist da ein heiperer Gumme von einem vollen Mensch, der Arbeit mit einem Keuer war Bulldozer, Jede zaak wat lijkt te gaan, lijkt te gaan, bieden ze af. Kent spraken, kent connecteren mensen, kent relationships met mensen, als u je smaak, als u je bataan. En als u het bij u bedacht, wie is het? Als u kent als de meisje, wie aan mooie zedag, hij de die, dan moet je naar buiten, als welke mensen financieren. Wie kent zich door leven, als samen met beschroom, als je kleen daarmee spoeren van ganse jongen, als je treft zich met zijn kinderen, als je ligt hem dood in kraunheid. 
aber ostlich gut nicht, nicht kein Jiddischkeit, nicht kein Gaschmis, nicht kein Rochnis, mit sich sich auf Panuse, das Fuhr kann am vierten, zweieinhalb Uhr weg, auf die kleine Mikwe, bringen Fleisch, bringt man ihn von Paris oder von Antwerpen, er probiert sich allein zu schüchten, er darf mal, er bohrt sich, er hat sich verloren, dachte man, der muss auf seine eigene Schritte, Als ein schwere Leben, die Kinder haben nicht der gehörige Kreise, sie lernen durch das Internet, andere sind gewohnt, mehr normal, aber zwei, drei, sie sind zurück, es ist gewohnt, man muss sich zu connecten mit der Kind von Duren, der Kind von Doten, der virtuelle Scherebe. Was verstehe ich nicht? Ich kann das sein, gar nicht mehr sein, auch nicht, es macht sich dann so stark. Ich bin in den Auto auf dem Weg zurück, von dem Weiß Chabad, von seinem Haus, Und befragt zu dem Antischemiot, wo der Lars durch da fuhr, die Polizei fuhr, da ging es an uns 24 Uhr am Schluss, 30 Uhr am Polizei, kam in jenem Gas, in der ganzen Gas von allen Raten, ist ungepackt mit Kameras, trapacht der Schreck, verwusst und verwendet. Er geht mal so, Rabbi Tschamayr, er geht ein bisschen mit der russischen Exit, er ist schon wieder ein russischer ganzer Tag, Rabbi Tschamayr, ich verstehe nicht deine Frage. Ich habe gewusst, wo sie am Morgen nicht ganz schlecht sind. Frage, die Seher pusht sich alle. Bis dann, Mensch, du kennst den Cyber-Gaschmier, Cyber-Rochmier, was du kennst, was du hier sagst, was du mich buchst. Bis dann, wenn ich sage, nee, ich kippe Schieter, ich kippe Schieter, und nicht da, man muss sich das nee, ich sage, ich denke, am Morgen, jede Tag, jede Tag, jede Nacht, diese schwere Arbeit, sich und probieren, und ihm. Rabbi Zemayel! Er geht mal da schreien, da schreibe es, aber da sage ich schreien. Ihr wisst, von was ich bin da! So ich sage, nein, du hast frei gesagt. Weil ich ist Gabel, wie ist Gabel, ich schmeier Abo! Ich ist Gabel, wie ist Gabel, ich schmeier Abo! Er hat gequitscht. Sie sind auch jeden da in Deutschland. Verweite ihn. Was weiß ich, dass sie da Hashem Echot und Schmei Echot. Und unser Taf geht auf die Welt und passt mal Masse von ich ist Gabel, wie ist Gabel, ich schmeier Abo! Ich kenne euch nicht mal so ein Teil, liebe Buchrem. Ah, lächtige Buchrem. Ein Mensch mit der Sa, passt es, der Sa, liebe die Gemeinde, mit der Sa, Tmimis von Emmes, der Sa, Reinkeit. Wo sei es der Schräg? Er sieht der Psa Stelle, er sieht der Psa Kuwe, er sieht der Psa Rochmies für sich, seine Arbeitsteure, er sieht der Psa Fluch in Geld, in Kuwe, in Geld, äh, Greit, äh, mit der Wahl, mit den Kindern. Leben in Deutschland mit schrecklichem Antisemitismus, Unkapanuse, unabhängig von gehörigen Minen, er ist umgeleitet von sich, aber er will weg von der Krise, aber er will nicht mehr machen, dass er noch mit dem Dämmel kennt, der Eulen Kimmel, bei Nacht ist er spät, und er will nicht mehr mit dem Dämmel kennt, und er will nicht mehr mit dem Dämmel kennt, und er will nicht mehr mit dem Dämmel kennt, und er nicht mehr mit dem Dämmel kennt, und er will nicht mehr mit dem Dämmel kennt, und er will nicht mehr mit dem Dämmel kennt, und er will nicht mehr mit dem Dämmel kennt, und er will nicht mehr Aber Aid muss für den richtigen, heiligen Aruchem, heiligen Ideal, von oft dem Fall, wo ich nicht mehr so ein Nefes gehen, kipp schiet euch. Ich gabel, wie ich gabel, ich schmei, rabo. Mit dem Emmes, mit dem Tmimes, mit dem Simche, mit dem Chayes. Nicht mehr habe ich schon elf, meine Brüder weg, von dem ich geist bin. Ich hoffe, dass die Buchen mit mir genügt, die Eulen in Amerika, mit allen Simonen, mit allen, mehr wie Simonen, das ist ein von Buhurig Beraglov, nicht einer, nur Harig in Beraglov, und es eine gewisse Läuskeit, gewisse interessante Kille von dem, ich hoffe, die Buchen geben sich ja achten, wie mehr es ist möglich, und wie stärker es ist möglich, in ähm, alle anderen Sachen, in der Abunnen, die Gemütsweis, oder auf vielen Juni, Maluche, Chivim, von Zibbe, von Mikwe, von allen Sachen, Awade, 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 Oil Sidu, Achshar, Sufik, Fek, Zweike, von Pekich Nefes, Awade, die alle Sachen wären nicht, es ist 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 nicht, aber Sachmul, herangekleidet, in dem Mr. Schmitz, was wir gehabt haben, Mr. Schmitz, in drei Minuten, aber es ist nicht, es ist nicht, es ist nicht, trinkt ein Kerz, es ruhig, und probiert, leben mit dem Gedanken, ich darf gedenken, und muss es dann taff geht auf der Welt, Ich gada el, wie ich gada el, schmei rabo, und da hab ich gelesen, der ich bin jung im Wolf, bei der Mendel, Ulo, was schulen, so lungen wir zu der richtigen Platz, in Ganeiden, in Rovat, sehen, 
die Kinder lechen einfach zusammen, die Säume im Acht, die Säume im Schrein, jetzt zusammen ist Gadal, wie ist Kadal, ist mein Rabbo, drei Bischel Unherr und die Kadaischem, und drei Bischel schon gefunden sind, auf Klalis Ruhl, und ich immer alle Lume da, ich immer alle zu sein da, und so sehen wir Kurev, a geile Schleim, a Ischie, Kräuwe, a Refiefer, alle Kräuwe, ist Ruhl, und alle Brim, ja Smidi be Brisom, so kennen Warte, Tinta, ke, Fakidi, Schmoi, ist Burach, Fag, Is gadli, is gadli, is morim zan kere na tere, trik unfil den koil, den tzaftefem, koil kol yankef, eme tzaftefem, de buta eknesies, na mamzer, de lechtekeit, mamzman, de oelem trasket, en lenen en horve, de beien, ien umola tere, huda ik aitaif, zo zeuche dan bekurev, ta gantze, rechtige, jeshiem, zo zeuche dan trik, Horror in den Lernen, bei Hubes Hadas, mit Buddha mit Rusche, mit solche Anzahl, Gile, Kräufe, beim Heiru, bei Jumaini, Umme. Geheimet Trick zum Jesod Aschir, Jesod Kinjen Kesef. 